my name's Dan Simpson. We're here at the Willie the Boatman Brewery in Tempe, and I'm having a chat to Pat, who's joint brewer here and owner of the brewery. And we're having a talk today about his Guza beer. Pat, what can you tell me about the beer? Mate, it's a, let me tell you, it's a beautiful beer, Dan. It uh, comes from a town in East Germany. Uh, it's a very rare beer. Uh, actually, in Germany, I, I don't believe they call it a beer. They call it a fermented food product. Okay. And that's because of the uh, German legislation in regards to water purification yep. and their beers. Uh, so this is a beer that comes from a town uh, called Gosla. Yep. Um, and um, it's, a, it's a salt beer, and the salt comes from a, a, an ore mine that was uh, operating for over a thousand years, and they had a salinity problem in the town. So um, the, the only beer they could make was a salted, salted beer. So it's a, more of a, we've tried to replicate the original Goza that they were making. Um, and, and so when you drink it, you'll find that it's more of a mineral salt than an actual table salt sort of flavour. But I love it. It's a great hot day beer. You know, it's a beautiful summer beer. Excellent. And what, what kind of profile does the beer have? So what were the malts and the hops that you used? Was there anything different that you put in? Look, we used, um, essentially it's a wheat, it's 40% wheat. Okay. It's 40% uh, Pilsner and 20% acidulated malts. Uh, where you get, so the, the malt profile is a sour um, and on the nose when we open it you'll find that it's a honey sour on the nose and the beer finishes dead on the palate with salt. Um, the, the mash that we did was a bit different to any mash that I've ever done uh, where you mash the pilsner and the wheat malt for an hour and then after the hour you add the acidulated malts for an extra 45 minutes. So I think also a lot of, because uh, there's only, in 800 litres of this beer, there's only uh, 700 grams of table salt, or a pink Himalayan okay. rock so, salt. So you added the salt yourself? Yeah, we had to, but a lot of the salt profile comes from the acidulated malts. Okay. Yeah. Well, how about we open it up and Get give into it a go? This, this bad boy. I love it. I've been looking forward to this one for a while. <laughs> Unfortunately, we've got no marshmallows. So we brewed this for... Craft Beer Week. Yes. And uh, we were serving it with um, apple juice infused marshmallows. And the idea of that was traditionally when you ordered this beer in Gosla, you would have a cherry schnapp with it. And we couldn't afford to buy Sydney cherry schnapps. No. <laughs> <laughs> so we, uh, we thought of a better idea, a cheaper idea, and, that, and to also, but to replicate and be true to the beer, as we've tried to be doing to, during the brewing process, we thought we'll give the drinker something that an East German in the 1600s would have, would have enjoyed. Excellent, well, cheers. Cheers, mate, enjoy. Mm. Are they gonna love it or hate it, Dan? I really like it. Mm. Yeah, it's a... Different, huh? It is. That beautiful it's, honey sour nose. It really does have the honey and you do get just that little bit of the salt on the lips at the end, which is makes it a great summer beer, I think. It's interesting that they loved it so much in, in Germany because it's a beach beer. It is I a really beach think. beer. Oh, we call it, it's like the best thing of, get, you know, it's the, it, the closest thing to drink beer in, uh, beer in the ocean. It's the closest thing to drinking beer in the ocean without getting your feet wet. Yeah. You know? It's, uh, yeah, the salt just, I don't know how, however you talk about to people about salt and beer, but you know, I think it's, it really goes well. And I want to sort of maybe experiment with maybe a few different flavours and the salt, I don't know, maybe a bit of raspberry or something would go well in the beer as well. Yeah. Now, anyone wanting to get their hands on this and give it a try, where would they get it? Probably the best place at the moment would be the Uncle Hops at the bank. Okay. Um, the Dove and Olive have sold out. Uh, basically, we brewed 14 kegs for Craft Beer Week yep. and pretty much have sold out. There, I know there's two kegs left at the Bank Hotel in Uncle Hops and there's one at the Marlboro Hotel at the, um, in the bottle shop in the Growler Station. So that's probably your best place to get the beer. We are going to re, um, re-brew it, yep. just because it's, it, we've had so many inquiries about it. Mm. Excellent. Well, Pat, thanks very much for having me in today. No worries, Dan. Well, you heard the man. 
Get out in Sydney, get to Uncle Hop's and try the Goozer.